this was me before. I would wake up maybe around 30 minutes before I had to leave the house. So I would be pretty rushed, you know, try to get everything together, go to school or go to work. And then after I came home, I would kind of like deflate entirely and just pretty much lay in bed and do nothing or just binge watch anime and then i would go to bed and i would do it all over again mind you i still watch a lot of anime now but this is me now i consistently study three times a week for two hours each for the past nine months and i have been 99 percent consistent the only two exceptions is when I was moving and when I was sick. I was and still am a data scientist at a fan company in tech. I also trade, I do YouTube, I teach online courses. So it's not like the rest of my life has gotten easier. I'm actually doing way, way more than I was doing previously. So through trial and error, I kind of figured out the combination of factors that worked so that I was able to do this. And in this video, I'm going to expand on that formula, really lay out the steps of this so that you can actually make it work for you as well. And you don't have to be like me and just kind of try a bunch of random things until you finally figured out the correct combination. Plus, I'm going to show you guys this supercharged method, which is this collection of scoreboards over here that has really elevated the consistency and productivity of myself and many other people as well. So before I give you this formula about how I build this consistent learning habit, I made an entire video about why I still consistently learn learn new things and try to incorporate more skills into my skill set despite already having what is considered a very good job as a data scientist in tech. So do check out that video if you haven't already over here. Now let's talk about the how. I will give you my formula. And this is a formula that I really, really wish as somebody had given me about a year or like a year and a half before so I didn't have to go through so much trial and error, uh, but I'm giving that to you now. So listen carefully. Okay, so here's the five ingredients and then I'm gonna go through each of these one by one. Number one is to have an overarching goal and sub goals. Number two is figuring out what pushes your buttons. Number three is adapting to the correct mindset. Number four is finding the right support system. And number five is having a way to measure progress. I'm gonna illustrate how these ingredients all work with each other by using Naruto and how he managed to achieve his overarching goal of becoming Hokage. And why am I using Naruto as a reference? Uh, because I freaking love Naruto. Sadly, life is not Naruto. So I will also explain how I engineered specifically these ingredients into my own life to help me achieve my consistent learning habit and explain to you how you can do it as well. So Naruto's overarching goal is to become Hokage. And this can be broken up into a bunch of sub goals as well. For example, mastering Rasangan. Rasangan! Rasangan! Um, going into sage mode and saving Sasuke. So why is Naruto so motivated to become Hokage that he never gives up? Well, I would argue that it's not entirely motivation. It's actually the second ingredient of developing a consistent habit, which is getting his buttons pushed continuously. So you see with Naruto, what really triggers him, what really pushes his buttons and gets him all fired up is feeling like he's being rejected. And also when people think he can't do something or when there's a challenge. You know, when he was really young and he was being discriminated against, rejected, that really fueled him a lot. And as he got older, every time there was a challenge, like Sasuke was a really, really big challenge for him. He was his rival. And that was like a continuous form of pushing Naruto's buttons and just getting him continuously to keep going and going and not giving up. And every time he encountered a challenge where someone told him that he couldn't do something, that always got him super fired up and let him continue on that journey of achieving his goal of becoming Hokage. So what you need to do is figuring out what pushes your buttons and then engineering that into your life. So, but first let's talk about the third ingredient as to why Naruto didn't give up and kept on working towards becoming Hokage and achieving his successes. It is his mindset. At first glance, I think it's really easy to think that Naruto just has that trait in which he just pushes pushes really, really hard all the time. And it certainly is true that he does push really hard and that he does work really hard. But what's actually more fundamental is the fact that he's not an all or nothing kind of guy. He does, it doesn't matter how he feels. Even if he feels awful and he know he's not able to perform at his best, he still goes out there and puts himself out there and tries. And that really is what matters in the end. It's not about all these fantastic successes that he achieved. It's actually about the fact that he always showed up. That was the trait about Naruto that is so incredibly admirable. He always showed up and that for him became a habit. It just became a thing for him. It didn't matter how he felt. It didn't matter what was going on. He always showed up and he always tried. And this is actually a perfect illustration of James Clear's famous quote about habits, which is, you do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. 
You see, Naruto developed that system of not giving up, of always showing up. So this mindset is extremely crucial to internalize. Fourth ingredient is having the correct support system that works for you. In Naruto's case, it's actually great because his support system are also the people that push his buttons because he's so fueled by rivalry and challenges. Having Sasuke on the same team as him, as well as a lot of other shinobi that also were very rivalry driven was really important. You see, they supported each other and they encouraged each other and they kept on pushing each other's buttons as well. So it was really like two birds with one stone. This is a great demonstration of the quote, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. Naruto had an amazing support system, starting off with Yuruka, the teacher that believed in him from the beginning. There was Rock Lee, there was Jiraiya, and of course his biggest rival and it's also his biggest support system, Sasuke. And the final fifth ingredient is a measurement system so that he's able to see his progress throughout time. One of the perks of having a career as a shinobi is the fact that your progress is very, very visible. It's physical and you can see that progress. And on top of that, because of the way that the shinobi system was designed, there's a lot of mock fights that are always happening. There's missions and there's also more formal exams like the Chunin exams. So in that way, Naruto was able to see his progress and see how his hard work has been paying off, which would then motivate him to keep on doing that because he knows he's on the right path. So in my opinion, these were the five crucial ingredients that allowed Naruto to keep pushing forward, facing any challenge that came across him, overcoming those, and finally becoming Hokage and way more than that too. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that extended analogy slash reference. I had a lot of fun making it. So now let's address the fact that unfortunately we are not shinobi and we are just lowly people who are not anime characters. Um, so what are we supposed to do? Worry not, I will explain how to engineer these ingredients into your own life. Before we get to the rest of the video, let me first introduce you guys to Skillshare who is today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring classes for creators to explore new skills, dig deeper into existing ones, and just keep the creative juices flowing. Some of my personal favorite classes I've taken on Skillshare are on video editing, freelancing, and productivity. I actually first came across Skillshare myself over a year ago when I first started this YouTube channel. At that time, I'd never edited a video before in my life. So I took Jordi Vanderput, I think his name is. I took his class, which was called Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro for Beginners class. That was how I learned the basics of video editing and was able to start producing videos on this channel. Over time, I also kept on up-leveling my skill set and making my editing workflow more efficient by taking his follow-up class, which was called Advanced Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro 2020. This was a huge game changer for me because it allowed me to decrease my entire editing process by up to two to three hours. So more time to watch anime. These days, I do work with an editor who is far, far better at editing than I am. Shout out to Tony who is editing this video as well. But these two classes have been extremely crucial in terms of getting my YouTube channel off the ground and helping me continuously improve my video quality. Skillshare is created specifically for learning, which means that there's no ads and they're also launching new classes all the time. The first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in the descriptions will get a one month free trial on Skillshare so that you can start exploring creativity today. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, so ingredient number one is how having that overarching goal and sub goals. For me, my overarching big goal is to create a life that I find worth living. And what that means to me is to be able to do exactly what I find most fulfilling whenever I want to. And the biggest tool in my toolkit in order for me to achieve this is to learn constantly. Over the years, I'm learning how to get my finances in check and how to work towards being financially free. I've learned and still I'm learning how to be a better data scientist, how to start a business, how to maintain a business, how to keep growing that business. And since my life's goal is to lead that life so that I'm doing what is most fulfilling to me at all times, I need to be constantly learning new skills so I actually know what makes me feel fulfilled. Figuring out what it is I like doing and if possible, how to convert that into an additional revenue source. For example, being an online course instructor, trading, and booking speaking gigs. As I was saying earlier, what pushes Naruto's buttons is rejection, where people telling him he can't do something and rivalry and challenge. Now for me, it's actually social accountability. You see, I am a people pleaser and promises and things I say to people, they mean a lot to me. So if I say I'm gonna do something, I will literally try so hard to make sure that I do what I said I would do. When I walk down the street, I need everybody all day long to like me so much. And through a lot of trial and error, I found that the perfect medium for me to push that button all the time, that button of 
being a people pleaser and social accountability is by live streaming my study sessions. It's literally the second smartest thing I've ever done in my life. And the first one was starting this YouTube channel. I pre-post my live streaming sessions on Sunday and I post them for Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. And because people know I have the schedule and they see the live stream that's there, it holds me extremely accountable because I put them there and there's that expectation now and I can't disappoint other people. And even though there's many, many times in which I really don't want to go and study on that live stream, I still force myself out of bed and I go and do it because of that social accountability. It's crazy how well it's worked for me. So my homework for you is to think about that. What is it that pushes your buttons? What is it that just kind of like compels you to go and do something even when you don't feel like doing it? Maybe you're like Naruto and it's about rejection and challenge and rivalry. Maybe you're like me, it's about social accountability. Maybe it's completely different, but it's really important to figure that out for yourself and think about how you can engineer that into your own life that will then push your buttons continuously and really get that learning habit to stick. So next ingredient is relatively straightforward, but extremely, extremely powerful. And that is mindset. Similar to Naruto, my whole mindset is about showing up. It's not about how hard I pushed and how productive I am at the end of the day. It's about the fact that I made that effort and I managed to keep developing this habit and I kept the streak going. My goal is to show up to these live streams and sit there and try to study. And there are days in which I can't concentrate at all, maybe because I'm tired or I'm just not in the mood for, for whatever reason, but I don't beat myself up if I'm not as productive as I had hoped to be. I'm just proud that I showed up and I tried because I know that in the end, slow and steady and just accumulating and developing that habit and keeping that streak going is gonna pay huge dividends. So I highly encourage you to adopt this mindset. Think about it not in terms of what your productivity was or how hard you worked. Think about it in how consistent have you been? How many times have you showed up? And start feeling proud of yourself for showing up, regardless of how much work you manage to get done. Okay, next ingredient is the support system, which live streaming for me has also been amazing for. The saying that like attract likes and bird of a feather flock together or something like that, I'm probably saying that wrong, but I, th I think it actually is very true. I feel so incredibly lucky for the amazing community that we have in the study for Tina live streams. Am I overstepping boundaries if I say we've actually become really good friends? Every time I live stream and I see the very consistent people that show up, it just makes me feel so happy because it feels like we're just you know, checking up with each other. We're keeping each other accountable. You know, we're working through stuff. But during the breaks, we're checking in on life, seeing how everybody's progressing, celebrating the things that went well, being there for each other for things that didn't go well. And I don't know, it just feels like a community that I truly feel like I belong to. Like I trust you guys so much and I know you'll be there for me and I will be there for you. So if you'd like to join the Study with Tina live streams as well, um, feel free to check out the Study with Tina channel, which I link in the descriptions and also the Google calendar with my live streaming schedule. But like I said, you don't have to. Live streaming is just what has worked really well for me. I've also seen people have really amazing results by just having small groups of friends or groups of people that keep each other accountable. The key factor is just to make sure that you choose the correct group of people. It has to be a group of people that you really trust and can actually hold each other accountable. So I actually wouldn't recommend just getting your best friends together because then you kind of like all feel like it's okay if you don't achieve something. So it's kind of like a fine balance, right? You got to trust these people and they have to trust you, but you also have to be able to hold each other accountable for it. Okay. So fifth ingredient is the measurement system. And this is also the supercharged method and has been a huge, huge game changer that has really brought all the other ingredients together. And this is the scoreboard measurement system. It's about tracking your progress towards your goals. So you're able to see the progress that you've made over time. See, unfortunately, unlike being Shinobi, what oftentimes is very physical and very visible, for a lot of the stuff that we're doing, the stuff that we're learning, you don't actually know how much that you've learned. So you have to have a way of tracking that so you know you're making progress. I designed my scoreboard system based upon my favorite book, Four Disciplines of Execution. And I also made a video, which I'll link over here, which I highly recommend that you check it out for how to design an effective scoreboard. For the study with Tina live streams, there's a small subset of people who are tracking their goals along with me, which is this scoreboard system. Um, each person has their own scoreboard and they make their own scoreboards so is very customized towards what they're trying to achieve. In my case, I've been learning how to trade for the past few months. So what I was tracking is the number of markets that I look at because I know that by looking at different markets and putting in trades is the best way for me to progress in my trading journey. For other people, it's about tracking how many topics they've learned, how many projects they've done, how much exercise they've done. After each live stream, so three times a week, we review these scoreboards and see how everyone's progressing. When there's someone who's falling behind, we all collectively keep that person accountable and try to figure out is this like a one-off thing? Should that person maybe change their goal, maybe change their lifestyle so that they're able to achieve their goal? And of course, we're always celebrating the streaks and the wins as well. So if you wanna join the scoreboard system, 
uh, you're gonna have to show up to the study with Tina live streams a few times. Uh, we have a screening process because we don't want, you know, like just people randomly joining. Like people who do join are people who are really, really dedicated to achieving their goals. But I'll link these instructions in the description below as well. Okay, so we're finally getting to the end of this video. I really hope that throughout this video, you've been able to understand these five core ingredients, which I think has been responsible for why I've been able to develop this consistent learning habit and helped you figure out how you can implement this into your life as well. You see, the truth is, is that I can open the door for you, but it's still up to you to walk through that door. It's still up to you to figure out what your goals are and what your sub goals are, which requires some pretty deep introspection. And it's also up to you to figure out what pushes your buttons and engineer that into your life, similar to what I've done by live streaming. With that being said, if social accountability is also kind of the thing that pushes your buttons, then I highly encourage you to check out the study with Tina live streams because it's already there and there's already a community there as well. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this has been a helpful video for you and I will see you guys in the next live stream or video.